Okay, so here's a quick tutorial on how to make a graph inside Pages, just in case you're confused. Um, so the first step is to click on the little uh, plus sign over on the upper right, and it's going to pull up a menu of different graphs. So we have like some 2D graphs, some three-dimensional graphs, and some interactive graphs. We don't need anything fancy for this because we're just going to uh, share it as a PDF at the end. So you want just like a normal 2D graph, and there's different colors you can choose from. Um, so sort of whatever you want. Now, as I told you in class today, if you are looking at, this one's pretty, if you're looking at the, um, the effect of the type of service material, that's definitely going to be a bar graph. If you're looking at the effect of mass of the object, then that would definitely be a scatter plot graph, which if you scroll down over here in the bottom left, that would be your scatter plot right there. Um, and if you're looking at the, uh, the surface area, it could be either one. So if you actually measure the surface area, like, um, you know, 2 times 4 would be 8 uh, inches squared, then you might look at, uh, it would be a scatter plot because you're comparing numbers versus numbers. If you just said one side is like 2 by 8 and the other side is 10 by 2, something like that, then that would be a bar graph. So we're going to make a bar graph. So I'm going to just choose my lovely bar graph here. And it automatically makes a graph for us, and it sort of just puts in some data. So we need to sort of just click on the graph, and you can uh, edit the data. So it brings us to a data table. Now, the way this is set up, technically this first column over here, we'd really want our independent variable. So the different types of surface materials, the different masses and whatnot. The way they have it set up is sort of the opposite, though. So I'm just going to kind of go with what they have. So I'm going to replace the months with my different variables. So let's assume I want to do um, the service material. So let's say I had a yoga mat. Um, the rug. Let's say we tried the floor. And maybe sandpaper. All right. Over here... Um, when you do a bar graph, you only want to graph the averages, all right? So right now I'm testing one, two, three, four different materials. I'm, my bar graph's going to have four bars, all right? The common mistake is to graph all of the trials. That is incorrect. If you are making a scatter plot, though, you do want to graph all of the different trials you have. So it's sort of a different approach. So let's imagine, I'm just going to make up some numbers here. Let's say this was exactly 1 Newton, 1.5 2 and 2.5. Whoops. 2 and 2.5. So again, I'm making these numbers up. And this I'm just going to delete. Delete. All right. Now you see I have some like I have some empty rows here. All right. Um, you want to sort of get rid of those because otherwise it's going to make your graph look a little bit different. So what I like to do is you click on sort of this edge here. You can sort of click on that and then just hit delete. All right. Try doing it for the one below as well. If it's going to let me, it looks like not. Then I'm going to try getting rid of this last column. Sometimes it lets you, sometimes it doesn't. All right. Doesn't seem like it's going to. So I just hit done. So now those are my four bars. All right. And it looks, looks pretty good. However, you'll notice that, um, so my, it's clear that on the y-axis here, these numbers represent the amount of force in newtons. And it's clear that my independent variable is on the x-axis where it belongs. That is my dependent. If for some reason it seems flip-flopped, what you need to do is go back and edit data, click on the little uh, gear sprocket there, and you can switch it from plot rows as series to plot columns as series. Sometimes that will fix the graph for you. Um, for me, as you can tell, now my labels are up here, and that's not really where I want them to be. Okay? So I'm going to go back the other way. All right, there we go. So now what I, I need to do is a few things. Uh, up here, where it says Region 1, this is my, uh, my, my key, and I really don't want that on there. I'm just not a big fan. So to get rid of that, I need to click on the little paintbrush here, and then choose Chart, 
and then chart options on the bottom. And once I'm here where it says legend, I want to take that off. However, I do want a chart title, so I'm going to put that one on. And yes, I want it in the middle, so I'll kind of leave that setting the way it is. Um, you can change your chart font, so small or bigger, you can change the font. Um, if you want like a different font, that's fine. I'll choose something nice. Let's do, ooh, I'm a big Markerfelt fan. Let's try that one. All right. Also, if you notice, I'm missing my values and my labels for my Y and my X axis. So to add those, I have to click on the X axis at the top and then turn on axis name. Slide that over. And you'll notice now I have a label at the bottom. I'll do the same for the Y axis. All right. Again, I'm going to click off axis name, and then boom, there's my value over there. So now what I need to do is I need to actually click on these three things to be able to edit them. So my title, I'll just call it, um, let's see, Oops. All right. So I'll label my x-axis as my surface materials. And then for my y-axis, I'll sort of just again tap on that. And I will label this um, my dependent variable, which all of you have the same dependent variable. It is the amount of force. And our unit will be Newtons. So that's about all there is to it. Um, now that I have my graph made, uh, I can easily kind of change the size. So I can you know, make it smaller, um, bigger. I can stretch it out, longer, taller. Uh, manipulate it pretty much any way you want until you get it to look just the way until you're happy with it. All right. So that's pretty much all there is. Um, and if you still have any questions, then you can send me an email. All right. Thank you.